Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel 18 today, verses 17 to 19. David slew Goliath just, uh, just a bit ago, and now uh, Saul is looking at David with some many, many concerns, but let's read these verses. Then Saul said to David, Here is my older daughter Mirab. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, Let my hand not be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. So David said to Saul, Who am I, and what is my life for my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it happened at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given to Adriel, the Mahalathite, as a wife. So this incident is an affront to David. He's promised Merab to be his wife, but that doesn't happen. But the interesting piece is what it reveals about, about Saul's thinking. Saul says, okay, you know, make sure you fight the Philistines for me. And because it, tell, it tells us here, for Saul thought, let my hand not be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. Saul's plan here is to kill David by going to war with the Philistines. And it's, it's kind of, again, that human look. It's that human look. It's not looking for the divine deliverance. If, uh, if we just put David in the, in the way of danger enough times, Eventually, you know, a stray arrow, something will happen. He'll be killed by the Philistines. I'll, I won't have to worry about David anymore uh, because now my reign as king will be safe again because David will be out of the way. That's the kind of thinking going on in, in the head of Saul. So Saul already has a design of murder and mayhem toward his number one hero, David, who was just simply a person of faith who boldly struck out and was victorious over the giant Goliath. There's nothing in the text to this point that suggests to us that there's something wrong with David's motives. It's just not there. Uh, David's not a perfect person. We're going to see problems with David as time goes on. But in many ways, in these early years, we don't see really those problems. And so this is this is uh, Saul's paranoid, you know, this unreasoning fear, this paranoid viewpoint. Saul is zeroed in on David, and Saul is, is trying to triangulate and figure out a way to get rid of David. He doesn't trust him. He's afraid of David. He's afraid that he might become king instead of Saul. Big problem when things are in this situation. David, there's nothing here really about David's response. David just sort of uh, bears it and accepts the humiliation. Things move on. So again, we look for God to be our leader. We look for God and we can trust in human leaders, not so much, but in God always, always. Let's pray. Your Father in heaven, help us to be uh, your servants. Help us to not lose sight that, that you are our God. We are to trust in you. We look for human leaders. We, we, we seek their blessing. We're glad to have them, but we want to continue always to look to you as our ultimate leader, Lord. Sometimes our human leaders will have strange thoughts and will not be our friends in your work. Help us to be right. Help us to forgive and be merciful and to continue to be bold on your side. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So may God be with you and I, uh, whatever we're up against, as we serve him without failing him. God be with you.